What's going on guys, welcome back to another episode of Ravens Reviews and today we're back with some more predecessor, I cannot get enough of this game and today we're playing Sparrow, so we pick the Ranger Crest and we pick Storm Striker or whatever it's called to start off with um, before we get any deeper into this guys, I will be showing you the build on this video or talking you through the build, how I personally play Sparrow um, my thoughts on Sparrow and showing you the rest of the gameplay and talking you through it. But yeah, before we continue guys, if you could remember to like, comment and subscribe. Drop a... Oh my god, what am I saying? Hit, hit the notification icon um, so you know all my videos go live. It's completely free me to add to me and helps me out an absolute ton. And if you want to see more Pred gameplay, there's a playlist link in the description down below. Hard is just start checking that out. Um... But yeah, so this is Sparrow. So this is one of the ADCs that you play in the bottom lane or in off lane. Um, I, I think off lane is the same as bottom lane. I can't quite remember. But anyway, so as you saw at the start, I picked the Marksman Crest. Uh, it's recommended. So I, I picked that. Um, and I also picked the Storm Striker or Storm Splitter, whatever it's called. Um, the reason I picked this is because it helps very much later on down the line. Uh, it gives you attack speed and it has a proc where I think every five hits, um, lightning chains. Uh, so it's very good for clearing bots. So we're up against Lieutenant Bellica and a Twin Blast here. Um, I do struggle a lot early on against uh, both, both I believe, um, but I come back with a Vengeance later on. Um, as you can see, early game, just, just farming the bots, um, just putting the work in. The first ability I chose was my Hail of Arrows. Uh, the reason for that is because it's great bot clear. It keeps people, it keeps the enemies at bay. It gives them, gives me a, a, some range um, on them. And Belek is great at poking here. She's doing her job really well. She's she's poking. She's dealing continuous damage um, to not only their Belika, but um, to Twin Blast as well. Um, the, the poke is insane. My second ability, as you saw there, I just leveled up, is my attack speed bonus. So, if those of you that don't know, um, unfortunately, Decker blinked there and just managed to get there before I did. Um, oh my god, animals going crazy. Um, but yeah, for those of you that don't play Sparrow or don't know her very well, her abilities go as follows. So, L1, um, that is your Hail of Arrows. Your L2 is an attack speed bonus. It gives you movement speed, it gives you attack speed, and it lasts longer based on how many basic hits you manage to hit. I think I get Twin Blast here. Yep, there we go, perfect. Um, your R1 is a piercing ability, which is what I've just bought there. Um, it fully pierces through enemies, and if it's held, I think it's longer than a second, um, it does bonus damage. Um, so, Decker doing the absolute worst to me here. Not Decker, Bellica, sorry. I'm going to get them too confused, I feel like. Um, but yeah, get very low, so I'm going to recall here and go back. Um, and there we go, Stormbreaker. So that's what I'm building currently. So I build Stormbreaker. Um, once I've built Stormbreaker, I go into Sky Splitter. Now, those two correlate really, really well, especially with Sparrow's passive. Um... And I'll explain more about that later on. So it's it's always worked for me. I see a lot of people saying, "Oh, Sparrow is not the Sparrow is not the best build. Sparrow is not the not the best ADC. The Twin Blast, it's Twin Blast. He's definitely the highest up there." And don't get me wrong, played a lot of Twin Blast as well. Twin Blast is very very good. But for me, I feel like Sparrow's kit works a lot better. Uh, it might not in higher evos and higher like matchmaking and especially if rank comes out you might see sparrow drop off a bit but a pick rate has spiked a lot recently um so for those of you that haven't tried her out i'd highly suggest it so what was i saying before yes sparrow so sparrow is passive so her passive is called relentless um, and basic attacks and abilities apply stacks of Relentless to enemy heroes. Her basic attacks against targets afflicted by Relentless deal an additional 0.55% of their maximum health as bonus physical damage on hit per stack. Relentless stacks up to 4 seconds, stacking up to 6 times. So, 
what you want to build with Sparrow is attack speed. If you really want to capitalize on her um, passive, you want to build attack speed. And there's a lot of people um, that not don't necessarily don't build attack speed with her, um, but maybe focus on other uh, builds and then capitalize on that said build, such as ant healing or criticals, um, increasing critical chance and stuff like that. But very early on, I'm just gonna farm bots here um, and it's nice and easy for me. Um, I don't know where Decker is. She's coming back at the moment, that's fine. Um, so we're just, we're just gonna keep farming lane here, getting the last hits as best we can. Um, I am going to say this to you guys now, uh, later on, I panic sometimes. When I'm getting hit and there's red across my screen and I can see that my health bar is getting low, I do panic. Um, and I, I miss a few basic attacks. And a few is generous. Um, but yeah, so the first ability that I want to level up all the way is going to be my uh, attack speed bonus, which is called Heightened Sensors. Um, it increases attack speed for three seconds. Uh, landing basic attacks while heightened sensors is active, extends its duration by 0 0.5 seconds up to a maximum of six. So basically, if you do the math, if you hit all of your basic attacks, um, you're going to change this from a three second ability to a six second ability. And that's really, really good. Crunch just came down here with us. We're going to try to hit Twin Blast. Do we get it? Twin uh, Bellic is over here too. That was a good stun from her. Do I get it? Crunch got Twin Blast. I don't think I get Bellica here. No, Crunch got it. Which is fine. Um, like I said, I don't want to overcommit, especially when Bellica's there, because her stuns um, and everything like that do a lot of damage um, and put me out of position a lot. And, yeah, it's, it's just not a lot of fun. But as you can see, we're winning lane here. Um, we got a cheeky kill on Twin Blast later on, so we're just going to keep on pushing lane up. Oh my god. Just going to keep pushing lane up here. Um, and I'll come back to you guys once uh, once I need to talk you through something. So like I said, so the first thing we're building is Stormbreaker and we're going to go into Sky Splitter. Now both of these items are very uh, good on Sparrow, but they're also very common. A lot of people start their Sparrow builds with these. Um, and the reason for that is literally because it capitalizes on a passive. It gives her attack speed um, and it makes her a deadly, deadly force. The only... I've played a lot of Sparrow, right? I don't don't want to like toot my own horn or anything, but I play a lot of Sparrow. I've got her affinity up very high. Um, and the only time that I can say that I've really struggled um, is going, going up purely against other ADCs um, would be Kira, but Kira only late game. Um, I used to see a lot of Drongo. I'm not seeing Drongo as much. Drongo used to be a little bit of a problem. Um... But that's that's absolutely fine. Um, like I said, Kira is my main issue, especially if she's built right um, and she's she can get pretty strong late game, um, and she absolutely eats away at my health. I'm not saying that other characters don't. Uh, other characters do a lot, such as Grux, such as Rampage, um, Greystone, Shimbi, Feng Mo. All of those people hurt Sparrow a lot. 
Um, the way I see it with any ADC, because all the ADCs are ranged, if you can get close enough to them without dying and without losing enough health getting to them, if you can get in front of them, you're probably going to win that fight. Um, and the only reason I say that is because once you're up close and you're hitting us, we have nothing that we can do. We don't have a stun. We don't have a get out ability. Um, nothing like that. So we we really, really do struggle as ADCs if you're built and you're strong and you're a little bit healthy. Or maybe you just uh, you get the jump on us. It's it's gonna it's gonna hurt us quite a lot. So Twin Blast came out of jungle here. We've got uh, Gideon complaining that we didn't ping enemies missing because uh, Twin Blast killed killed Gideon. Um, I managed to get Twin Blast there, uh, and that's what I'm on about about the stuns. So Bellico got me there with um, her knock up stun ability. Her drone shot me as well, which stunned me. And then she used her ult on me as well, and that absolutely killed me and wiped me out. Um, and it wasn't wasn't a lot of fun. But yeah, so we, we died here. We're now 2-2-2 two, two, and two with 71 bot farm. Um, I think we're doing pretty well. We've just spent all of our money there um, to carry on building Sky Splitter. Our Sharpshooter Crest, or our Ranger Crest, is now leveled up to Sharpshooter Crest, and that's almost done. We're just over halfway there. Um... And what I want to speak about here, while I have you guys, is the gold buff that's in this lane. So, whoever gets last hit on this gold buff, uh, I think it gets a thousand gold. Um, and as you'll see here, I'll absolutely eat. So, Bellica, gone. Twin Blast, gone. Um, and that's what I'm on about, where if you build it right, um, and they don't have a get out ability, they don't have blink or anything like that, you're probably going to eat pretty well um so we just literally went from 2-2-2 two, two, and two to 4-2-2 two, two. um and as you can see with the bot farm getting built really good and now going and getting gold buff um it really does help you out and let me just check if my math is right here if it is a thousand i don't think i got last hit there i don't think i did maybe i did i'm not sure i thought it was a thousand gold but maybe i'm wrong um but yeah, gold buff is something you've really got to pay attention to. Sort of like in uh, the other lane where you have cyan buff, which gives you XP. This gives you gold, and this allows you to just get built really early on. Makes you really strong, um, and definitely changes the tides if you're not watching it and you're letting enemies freely get it. Obviously, there's not a lot you can do about it, apart from maybe steal. Um, <clears throat> like steal it, not steal the character. Um... But yeah, Decker was doing a great job as a support there. Literally body blocking the hit so I could get the damage in um, for the gold buff. Perfect, perfect support showcase. And sectioning off Twin Blast here. Do I get this? No, Decker got it. But it was teamwork. It was close. A lot of people, I see, especially higher up, it does matter. And especially in comp, it will matter. Um, but I see a lot of people complain where they say support stole the kill support got last bot hits they're not they what are you doing why why are you griefing for why are you like brother number one at the end of the game at the end of the day this is a game right and number two the way i see it is as long as they're not getting too much of said things like bot kills like enemy kills the way i see it it doesn't matter right i think i yeah, I blink out there. I ended up. I used my ult, but it didn't really didn't really get to capitalize off it, unfortunately. Um, and I'm gonna have to recall here because I'm out of mana. But yeah, um, I've lost my train of thought now. I forgot what I was saying. Uh, yeah, this. So also, uh, you can do one of two things, right? You can go cleanse, which is good. You can go eviscerator, which is what I got, which gives you attack speed. And the way I use this is. I haven't noticed a difference, right, from using Eviscerator while using my Heightened Sensors, my, my L2. I don't think there is a difference. I don't think it makes it any faster. So what I typically tend to do is press L2, wait till that's almost, like, gone. Wait till that's either gone and on cooldown or almost gone. Then pop that, and it keeps my attack speed up, um, and I get to capitalize off that. Countess is around here. Do I manage to 
do I grab this? So I'll use heightened senses there for my for the movement. Um, I think I might get this here. No, Gideon got it. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, Countess is the mid laner, so it makes sense. And I'm going to push Bellica here. Bellica tried to get cheeky with Crunch. And unfortunately, she messed that up. I think I might get her pick here. That was a good stun from her. Um, I don't know why she shot that plant and didn't use it. I think maybe she missed it. But yeah, that's this is what I'm on about. So I killed Bellica and I go straight for gold buff. And as you can see, at this late in the game, um, I've got that Stormbreaker all built up. That was a brilliant stun from Decker. Another brilliant stun and boop. And that's exactly what I'm on about. It's very, very easy to farm and to and to level up and to build Sparrow very, very well um, throughout the game. I think I might get this here even. No, Decker got it. But again, it... To me, that doesn't matter. Like, she could have left it for me, but I also could have fumbled the bag and then not got it. So, the way I see it is, as long as the support gets the kill and it is not out-farming me or out-killing me, then fine. Um, obviously, early game, it matters a hell of a lot more. Maybe even mid-game, some could argue, but for me, that's completely fine. Um, and I'll let you guys continue watching this footage, and I'll jump back in when I'm going to talk about the next item. So this is what I'm on about. So Sky Splitter. So he's grabbed Sky Splitter here. Um, and this is where my build changes a little bit. So I'm now looking around. I'm like, okay, what do I want? Do I want Demolisher or Kingsbane or the other one which gives me crit chance? Um, and I actually start building the mace. I can't remember the mace's name. Uh, the only reason I started to build this um, is because... It deals more damage. I mean, all items deal damage. Not well, actually, that's not necessarily true. But the reason I built this is because um, I was worried about uh, Rampage and Grux because their health pools can get very high late game, and that allows me to do. I think it's five percent of their maximum health as damage um, upon hit. I'm not in, or ability hit. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I might be chatting out my ass, but yeah, that's that's why I got that. Um, destroy that ward there and go back to my lane and keep farming. Again, there are there are team fights starting to happen, um, and you can definitely tell that Shinbi's struggling in her lane against Grux. Uh, I'm not sure if that's because Crunt, uh, Rampage has been jumping a lot or what. Um, the only thing I am worried about right now is how many fang tooths we've got because now they've got two, we've still got zero. Uh, Crunch should definitely have been paying attention to that a little bit more, but again, there's not really much you can do uh, without having comms with your jungler. Uh, that's another thing in bot lane. You're not expected to, but it definitely helps out. Um, oh my god, what am I doing here? Am I, am I going in on this whole team? There's no way. Rampage fucked his rock. They're, they're both out. They're both gone. I'm not blink. I don't have blink, but I wouldn't blink for that anyway. Um, missed that arrow, unfortunately. Pings the rampage is there. Decker got him there. Nice. He missed his rock again. Bellica with a stun. Just try to get rid of that bot. And then, and then I'm off. Straight away, I'm off back to my lane. Um, this isn't... Again, this is all player dependent and... Um, this is player dependent and this is match dependent on whether you start to roam at this point. You can tell that we're, we're fairly fed, we're up pretty high. Um, so you could you could roam and help out mid maybe if they're struggling. I wouldn't maybe roam as far as to the far lane um, because then you leave your lane open to get ganked. Um, especially if your support's still there. But... I tend to, if I see a team fight or I think a team fight's about to happen, I'll go in, I'll do a little bit, maybe pick up a kill or two, and then I'm straight back to my lane or straight back for health um, in the base. 
and building items. As you can tell here, that's what I'm on about, about missing my, my basic attacks. I can see Countess and Rampage are both on my arse. I blink out. I try to get out of there. I put some arrows down um, to try to slow them. Unfortunately, Countess gets the better of me and gets that pick there. But it's fine. We're still... I think we're like, I think we were like 6 and 5. 25% uh, bonus physical damage and scales are different in max health from 0 to 1600 and more 30% of physical armor. Yeah, so it's great for going against people that you know are going to build armor. It's great for people such as Grux, such as uh, Greystone. Uh, basically, anybody that's going to have a lot of health. Uh, Crunch, even. If he's building uh, physical, physical armor. I, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't played a lot of Crunch. I don't know what his build looks like. But... Yeah, I'll hop back in when I speak about the next item. So now we're three items deep, and I'll let you know when we get to the fourth. Tower under attack. Tower is under attack. In a fire burning bright.
Enemy tower under siege. Okay, we're back, um, and we're going to build Dust Devil. So what Des Dust Devil does is it allows our movement speed to proc um, and get higher up for us to move faster, I think. I think, from memory, Dust Devil allows... Actually, I can tell you right now. Dust Devil gives you 2% attack speed for 3 seconds on basic attacking heroes. It can stack up to 6 times, and at 6 stacks gains 15% movement speed. So... At this point, I'm not in it so much for the attack speed. The attack speed's great, um, but with the first two items we built, plus my passive, um, there I don't really need to worry too much about attack speed and damage from basic attacks. Um, but movement speed is definitely going to help me out here, uh, especially if I can get those six stacks, and then it gives me 15% movement speed. That allows me to either get in or get out, um, and it becomes very, very handy. Unfortunately... I think I still both of these, yeah. Yeah, Gideon tried to get him. Gideon could have got Rampage. I could have left it. But I just I just propped ult and I just went straight in. And you can see that I ate both of them. And I'm now 10, 4, and 5, which is great. I think I end this game on 13 or 15 kills. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, we're going to build Dust Devil. That's what Dust Devil does. It's a very good build. You can sacrifice Dust Devil if you have to. Um, if you want to go maybe anti-healing rounds. Um, or King's Bane, even. I don't think I built King's Bane in this. Maybe I did. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, King's Bane's another very good item that gives you Omni Vamp, um, and it restores health upon hit as well, um, which is really handy. But like I said, I'll let you guys continue watching. I hope you guys are enjoying, learning a lot. Um, and that's Dust Devil fully built, and I'll let you know when we get to the next one. Tower under attack. In a fire burning bright.
Ah, uh, yeah, so that's what I built. I built Lightning Hawk. So what Lightning Hawk does is it applies slow, and it also procs, uh, like, sort of like the Chain Lightning. Um, so what you could do is you could build Kingsbane if you feel like you're losing health a lot more, if you're taking a lot more damage and maybe still winning fights, but you're like, I went in, I got the kill, but now I'm going to have to recall, and that puts me out of position for the team, and it puts me out of position for uh, my lane. Uh... And then by the time I get back, the enemy's already got like 10 seconds left on cooldown. I'm going to see him soon anyway. Um, so what Lightning Hawk does is it doesn't give you that health back, but it applies that slow. So if you're winning fights or you're getting close to winning fights and then they're blinking out or they've got a movement ability or maybe they've got a Narbash with them that's giving them a speed boost every time he bangs his big fuck off drum, you that slow that you then apply through basic attacks really, really helps because it's going to cripple them and it means that they can't get out as fast and it either means that they're going to have to use their blink or they're going to have to use other abilities that they may have at their disposal to try to get out um and i think we yeah we get primal fangtooth here are we gonna we sneak up behind count s um i'm pretty sure yeah twin blast gets cheeky with me i proc oh i think count s might get me yeah Count S is a menace. People that know how to keep, how to play Count S and build Count S properly, honestly, menaces. Um, really, really unfortunate there. But like I said, I'm at 13, 6, and 7 now with 260 bot farm. I'm really not fast. We're up to their inhibitors. We're breaking their inhibitors. I'm pretty sure we get that here. No? I oh, know. I was just telling them to get out because there's four of them there. Um, I don't know what Crunch is playing at, really. Oh, Rampage ulted, that's not good. I think, yeah, Deco's probably going to get bit here pretty badly. Get in with the ult. Got Rampage, which is great. That Stasis was great, however. Ooh. Ooh, with the, with the blink. I'm pretty sure Gideon gets got, anyway, from my memory. 
He played, played, he played movement here brilliantly. So he blinked out after stasis to stay away from Grux. He used the exploding thing. He used his portal thing. He's going he's going here for for this. I think he was a little bit too slow. Countess managed to grab him. Um, I'm pretty sure she must have blinked for him. And was just keeping up with her movement speed. But yeah, a good job did him anyway. Because it was a good try. He was really, really close. He was so close actually to being safe. But... Countess just managed to grab him in the end. Um, but yeah, that is that is the build. So Stormbreaker, Sky Splitter, whatever this mace is called, I'm pretty sure it's called Demolisher or something. Dust Devil, Lightning Hawk. That is the build that I typically use with some variations. Uh, if you guys are curious where I get these builds from, I use an app, and I'm pretty sure it's a website as well called Predstats. And on there, it allows you to track your MMR. It tracks what heroes are in free rotation, what the win rates are of heroes, what the pick rates are of heroes, and allows you to create and share your own builds and also look at other people's builds for characters. That's where I've got most of my builds from and that's where I've learned about these items. And now I'm getting to the point where I can sort of adapt and change up on the fly for certain characters, Sparrow being one of them. Um, but yeah, this is where I'm going to end this episode, guys. Uh, I'm going to let the footage play out so you can see the win at the end and see what the stats were like. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope this has been uh, very informational. That's not the word I was looking for, but anyway. Um, I hope this has guys helped you out. I hope I've talked you guys into playing enough Sparrows and maybe looking into Sparrow or changing it up even. Um, and yeah, so if you could just like, comment, and subscribe, hit that notification icon so you know when my videos go live. It's completely free, means well to me, it helps me out an absolute ton. If you guys want to look at more predecessor content, there's a playlist in the description down below. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll see all of you at some point in predecessor. I'll see you later.